Welcome to the Rebuilding History Series. I'm Matt Pumphrey with Woody's and Wheels Restoration in San Jose, California. I was fortunate enough to apprentice with Tom Batchelor out of Reno, Nevada, where I really fostered my love for both early pre- and post-war automobiles and boats. I've been rebuilding history this way since about 2005. In late 2010, I received a call from a well-known collector and enthusiast who had suffered an unfortunate incident at the Monterey Historics earlier in the year. Something had gone wrong with his 1917 Hall Scott race car where it had broken down during one of the race laps. Hall Scott was one of the original creators of the World War I Liberty aircraft engine and subsequently used that design to produce this 9.9 .9 liter four-cylinder overhead cam and overhead valve engine which turns out 125 horsepower and around 400 foot-pounds of torque. The plan for this vehicle is to first get it back to the shop and learn what broke in the engine. The difficult and exciting part of restoring cars like this is that the parts are darn near impossible to find, so when it's time to fix something, you need to either get creative or fabricate the parts to replicate the originals. You could also imagine the attributed cost if something is wrong in the engine and never found, then later allowed to further deteriorate the engine, resulting in it having to come out again more parts sourced. When you get the engine out, you do the right thing. In order to restore and get this car back on the road, we have made out a checklist of all the things we're going to need to do. So far, we know for sure we're going to need to remove the body, interior, wiring, and once we get the engine out, we're going to have to inspect all the bearings, measure all the tolerances, and make sure everything is good and solid in the engine. On top of that, we're going to have to fabricate all new exhaust valves. We're going to have to find a new cylinder as well as a piston. If we can't source an original piston that we can use, we're going to have to fabricate all new pistons. On top of that, one of the rocker arms is also damaged, so we're either going to have to source an original or fabricate a new. In episode two of this series, we will be highlighting how we've manufactured all of these parts. Should make for an exciting series of cutting bits. We can finally see how the number two cylinder is missing its valve guide as well as the spring and the entire valve seat for that matter. It's pretty clear the cylinder is toast. In order to pull the engine, the entire body needs to be removed. This is because the engine and flywheel are set back in the frame, leaving the flywheel and clutch on the inside of the firewall. This is done for better weight distribution and enabling the car to have the streamlined looks that it has. Now that the body is off, it's time to get that engine apart and start machining some new parts to get this thing on the road. Thanks for watching our first episode. Tune in soon for the second episode where we will be highlighting the fabricating and proper reassembly of this fine antique race car. Then it won't be long until we get to take a drive on the open road.